Welcome, everyone, to this week's broadcast of Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. Stacey Kennedy. I'm Will Burnick. Mm -hmm. And today, we're broadcasting from the annual Ascend picnic. In addition, folks, we are following up on last night's broadcast, which you'll be seeing shortly, if you haven't already, uh, of the San Francisco Giants Autism Awareness Night, which was very, very successful. Uh, and uh, our people had a great deal of to good time interviewing some uh, notable people, including Will Clark and his family. And uh, we'll be following up with that very soon. And shortly from now, we'll be uh, talking to some of our people. So we're here at Oracle Park with Nicole Hernandez. Nicole, do you want to tell us what your connection to this event is? Yeah, I'm the Special Events and Promotions Manager for the San Francisco Giants, um, and I oversee the Autism Awareness event um, and working within the Giants and really an inclusive community. Um, we really wanted to just celebrate the autistic community that is here in our Bay Area with us. Um, it's such a close to our hearts, of course, with Will Clark and our family, too. Good. Do you want to tell us a little more about the history of the event and how? Go ahead. Yeah, so next year, this will actually be our 14th year doing this event. Um, we work very closely with um, ANOVA and Autism Speaks um, and really in the local community and figuring out how best to support those around us. How do you judge the success of the event? I would say by the crowd that comes out. I mean, the crowd is so supportive, but also it's about uh, really educating. You know, how best can we support those around us and educate on the best way to help, too? That's great. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the event? I just think this is such a special event. We want to really be intentional about being in our community and celebrate those around us, no matter what they're going through. And I think this gives us such an amazing platform to not only educate, but um, celebrate those in the community around us. Well, I want to say thank you on behalf of our community because it means a lot to us. Of course, of course. Thanks for having me. <laughs> okay, so we're delighted to be here tonight at Oracle Park the Giants Autism Awareness Night. And we have our special guest, Will Clark. Well, hello there, Ms. Camilla, and hello everybody in the audience. And, you know, Ascend is an adult autism group, and we have a TV show called Life on the Autism Spectrum. And we would like some of our members, some of our people from the show, ask Will a few questions. Is that good for you? I would love to. I'm looking forward to the questions. All right. How does your retirement, Sarah, how do you feel, retirement jersey feel now? John, you know, that was a great ceremony, and everybody had a lot of fun, a lot of Clark 22 jerseys out there, and I'm very proud right now to have number 22 hanging on the wall out there. Wes, do you have a question for him? Wes, would you like uh, yes, I do have a question for Will Clark here. So, Will, what was your favorite moment in your MLB baseball career? All right, so, Wes, my first at-bat in the major leagues was a home run off of Nolan Ryan. I don't think you can start off any better than that, so I think that would be my best moment. How have you been supporting the autism community outside the field? That's a great question, William, and so what I've been doing is not only trying to raise awareness for autism, but when I sign autographs, any money that I receive for signing autographs, I donate to autism. What has been your favorite team to play against? My favorite team to play against would be the Los Angeles Dodgers yeah. because that is like our big division rival and we are having autism night today against the Los Angeles Dodgers. How has life been in general with uh, the Giants and autism and, and your son? Okay. How is that going? Well, I appreciate the question, Stacy, and believe it or not, my son Trey is here for the first time, so you guys are gonna get a chance to meet him. But as far as, as far as the pandemic goes, it was a little rough on the baseball side of things because we couldn't travel too much and go see the guys we needed to go see. So now it's kind of come back down to earth. So now I'm able to go see the guys I need to go see. What was it like to have your jersey retired at the Giants, at the Giants Stadium? You know what, that's, that's unbelievable. It is my Hall of Fame and I treated it as like a Hall of Fame moment. And I'm so proud that whenever I turn around, I see number 22 hanging on the wall out there. So do you want to tell us why this event is so close to your heart? Well, it's so close to my heart because autism affects my family directly. Um, you know, my, we talked about my son Trey has a little bit of autism. It's mild now. But I am a spokesperson for autism with the San Francisco Giants. And I want to raise as much awareness as possible for this affliction. So we're here at Oracle Park with Gabe Giroso. And Gabe, can you tell us a little bit about what your connection to this event is? Well, I work in the special events department, the San Francisco Giants. Yeah. 
And I'm a Gallagher Fellow, so I'll be rotating departments for a year. And my connection to all these wonderful people is I played baseball at University of San Francisco. So I got to spend a lot of time with these people and, and really have a special place in my heart for them. So this is exciting. That's great. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the fellowship? Yeah, so it's the Pat Gallagher Fellowship. And they choose a person from my sport management master's program. And so it's a year-long fellowship, and I rotate between three departments, spending a couple months in each department throughout the year. That's great. Well, some of our uh, team members here have questions for you, and I think I'll start over here. So, Gabe, because you previously played for the USF baseball team for the Dons, um, what was your favorite moment during your USF baseball te team career? My favorite moment, the most memorable moment, would have to be Mario Damera's walk-off home run against Gonzaga to put us up one. That was my most memorable moment. And then also playing in the tournament was cool as well. How long did you play for USF Baseball? I played one year for USF Baseball and played the prior four years at St. Mary's College of California, just across the... Ha have you met the Giants? Have you, have you met the players in person? We run into each other once in a while. Um, we're separated. Our offices are a little bit far apart, but you walk through the stadium and you get to say hi to everybody and you cross paths from time to time. And have you gone on the road with the, with the players? I haven't got to go on the road yet. I just started working here about a week and a half ago, but that would be something that would be really fun to do. And if I was able to do it, I would be very appreciative. Would you say like, like in between USF and here, um, ha have you really connected with people, especially on the spectrum? been very close to them yeah absolutely yeah. I think that um, I have a very special special place in my heart for everybody and a uh -huh. lot of love for this community uh -huh. and it's something that I've been around my entire life uh -huh. and something that I love raising awareness for and something that I think people need to spend more time paying attention for and you know I love all you guys and I'm really happy I get to spend my time with you here we are with Amy G for Autism Awareness Night. Hi, how Hi. are you doing? I'm doing well. It's nice to see you again. It's nice to see you too again. And gosh, we this is maybe the second or third time or so, I know with Will Clark, but last time we were interviewing, we were pretty much standing right here. And so, um, autism, um, how do you feel tonight will go? I, well, I think the turnout was fabulous. Yeah, you know, Autism Awareness Night here at Giants Stadium has been a very popular night. And I love that the Giants bring topics like this to a discussion, because how do you learn about something if you don't talk about it? Absolutely, I so agree about that, yeah. And it's like no matter what, like obstacles, pandemics, et cetera, or so, it just, the community itself, as long as it's talked about, things just get, I like to use the word broader. Um, a lot of it just, um, and this is something I would say, you know, no matter like the journey, like I feel somehow it, it's been at a, such a comprehensive level, you know, and they, they're they very comprehensive differently. I mean, yeah. we all are and yeah. it just really, um, I just think it's just been quite a while. It's everything like is a ride yeah. or so. Yeah. And and I think n no matter what, where you are or so, that aut autism people, we, we all seem to be very honest and present yeah. all, all, at, all at once. I mean, at all times. Right. And, so. and, yeah. and autism is a spectrum. It doesn't yes. fit yeah. into a box. And I think what people walk away from with this evening yes. is that you may all have different uh, ways to approach things or ways yes. that you deal with yeah. things, but you all have something in common. We all have something in common here tonight in that we want to talk about it. We want to learn about it. Yeah. We want to make sure that people know there are resources for yeah. families and those who are, who are living with autism to help you be able to get through your day a little bit easier. For sure. And for all of us who do not have autism, to learn how to be a better person with somebody who and has no autism. no matter what, it's never too late, even yeah. as a grown up. And I'd say uh, uh, those on the autism spectrum, the whole community, their biggest gift is authenticity. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. 
Um, I just think it's a gift in general to know you, to have met you, to watch you do what I do. You're doing an excellent job. Thank you. And I think it's just really, really important for all of us to put, you know, stigmas to the side, assumptions to the side, and really yes. learn how to work as a community and learn what's beautiful about each and every one of us. I think also I would take progression over perfection any day. A hundred percent. There is no perfection. No, there isn't. Perfection doesn't exist. Just be, I, progression and education, the, the realness, awareness, yeah. 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 kindness, patience. We could use it all. So. Well, I, I think that pretty much explains Thank you for coming out tonight oh, again you. and for doing this. It's, it's truly an honor to be a part of yeah. this evening. It's always an honor to interview you too. Thank you. Yeah. I love that. You're doing a great job. I'll Thank have you. you take over for me. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> Here we are, Amy G again, Stacey Kennedy with the Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Thank you. Thanks, Amy G. Okay, well, you and I have had talked about this ad nauseum before as to the type of intensity you brought to the game. I, I, <laughs> it'd be nice to say you were <laughs> And how Trey's diagnosis changed you as a person, as a parent, and the, the patience that you developed through that. And if you would kind of share that story. You know, this is, this is one of the things that we talk about. We talk about this pretty much every time we have this get together, is for as intense as you are on the field, you know, I had to take a step back, I guess you want to say, because this is something that is very patient driven. And, uh, you know, I had to have a newfound patience that I didn't have before. And, uh, you know, but still at the same time, just my personality, I wanted to attack this. Um, I have a platform, and I'm going to use this platform to benefit Autism Speaks and ANOVA, all right? There are so many, there are so many families out here that are afflicted and need help, need resources to turn to, those kind of things, and I would like to help provide that means if, if available. If not, I try to turn it over to the experts and let them do it. But the fact that the San Francisco Giants have stepped on board, this, by the way, believe it or not, is year number 14. Okay, next year will be year number 15, and we're going to do a big deal next year. Right. So, another thing, too, is because of what the Giants had going on this year with, uh, I don't know, a jersey retirement, and, uh, a Buster Posey thing, and that 2012 thing, needless to say, Autism Night got pushed back to September. Next year, Autism Night will be earlier. It will be more towards, you know, Autism Month. And, uh, like I said, it'll be year number 15. We should, as we should. And we have a limited amount of time. I know we'll have some duties to do, but let's go down the line quickly. Mary and, I, Mary and I were talking prior to the panel about the stigmas attached to autism and her word of negativity and how can we reframe how people feel about autism. Obviously, education would be number one. But what is your advice on reframing? Well, I think a lot, you know, Autism Speaks in uh, their first 10 years spent a lot of time, effort, and energy on awareness. When my son was diagnosed 25 years ago, nobody knew about autism. Today, you see television, TV shows, all kinds of media. So I think we, we truly, along with every other resource in our community, were able to tackle the awareness. Now we're moving into more of acceptance. I, you know, when I talk about taking my son on vacation and he's rocking on the, uh, you know, in, in the restaurant and he's causing a little bit of a disturbance, I always try to take that opportunity to say, he has autism, I got this, don't worry, he's not going to be harming anybody. So acceptance and awareness uh, and, and looking at the opportunity to develop to full potential. We want all people with autism. Autism's a little tricky because it's a huge spectrum disorder. So you have people like your Different son, levels, yeah. and then you have people like my son, Hunter, who need 24 sevens. Uh, so that's the complexity of yeah, autism. Yeah, it doesn't fit into a box at no, all. No, it doesn't. So important to expand our own minds and awareness about what's going on. Andrew, I want to ask you if you could give some advice to those who live with somebody who has autism. and. You know, what, what is your best piece of advice to them in learning about this disorder and, and how it affects their lives as well? It's a journey. 
It's a journey, and you need to be prepared for your journey, meaning you need to be patient, and you need to be persistent. Uh, don't take no for an answer. The systems out there are not set up to help you, per se, unless you push the right buttons and find the right doors. So it is not a death sentence. It's not a situation where you're doomed to a, a miserable life. There are a lot of organizations, starting with multinational organizations like Autism Speaks, clinical providers like Inova, and a, a range of people who can help you ask for that help. Don't stay home alone and think, I don't need this help, because you're not talking about your own psychology, per se. You're talking about your kid and your family. And I've always said when people ask what Inova does, we provide happy childhoods. That's what we do. Because when the kids are happy, mom and dad are happy. If Trey had been perfectly well adjusted, Will might still be playing today. But <laughs> unfortunately, he needs to very go. Intense. He it still it be very takes intense. the whole family to be on this journey, yeah. whatever your family looks like. And families look a lot different wherever you are. Two moms, two dads, three moms, three dads, whatever it is. No mom, no dad. Um, it's, it's your journey and your situation. But there is definitely hope. That is the one thing I will say. And it's everywhere. And he's a perfect example of that. Thank you, and that, that, that's, that's wonderful what, they, what these two have said. They're amazing. They've lived it. They've lived it a lot more intently than I have. The one thing that I can say from the outside, kind of looking in, and we mention this every year, is celebrate the victories. Celebrate it. All right, because no matter how small they are, no matter how large they are, it is really big to that individual. Please celebrate them. I got a chance to do some interviews, you know, with Wes and Stacy, Jonathan, Will, all right? I have had a chance to see these young gentlemen and ladies grow for the last few years. Celebrate everything that you see. We'll now be speaking with Paige Nuaz. A mother has some very interesting information to tell us. Uh, Face the camera and then. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. That's blocking, okay? Ready? All right. Go. Okay. We'll now be speaking with Paige Nuaz, a mother of a daughter with Red Syndrome, who's going to tell us about that and some very interesting developments regarding that. Paige. Hi, nice to meet you and thank you for having me here to speak tonight. I have a daughter named Katie. She has something called Rett Syndrome. Um, my name is Paige Nuez. I'm with the International Rett Syndrome Foundation. And I'd love to share a little bit of information about Rett Syndrome because it is um, a neurodevelopmental disorder with a genetic cause. Primarily affects girls, but most of the girls are early diagnosed as having autism. Interesting. Because it first presents as very autistic. Children are devo born developmentally typically fine, and usually between the ages of one and three, they start to regress, withdraw socially, they lose their verbal skills, they lose a lot of motor skills, they start to have the onset of sleep issues, repetitive hand motions, which is usually the hallmark symptom, where doctors say, oh, this is maybe something different than autism and then they go and do genetic screening. Um, it's not a degenerative disorder, but it is progressive. Mm -hmm. So the symptoms that are uh, really full-blown Rett syndrome happens by the age of three or five, and then they live with full-blown Rett syndrome until 50, 60, 70 years of age. Mm -hmm. um, our organization does a lot of money to raise for research, as well as to support families in the United States and around the world. We're very excited. We have the first drug ever to be approved almost for Rett syndrome. It's before the FDA right now. Excellent. Um, and we're waiting for approval. It won't be a cure, but it will be a, uh, it's a therapeutic that might help in any number of symptoms. We don't know. It could be different for every child. Like for one child, it might help get her hand use back. For another child, it might help with seizures. We're all just very excited. We've been working for years and years for this day. Um, it doesn't only affect girls. I do want to say that there are a small percentage of boys that are affected by Rett syndrome as well. And we're trying to bring awareness to that fact. 
Uh, what I'd really love for people to know is that if you have someone in your life who has um, a diagnosis of autism or cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. and they haven't been screened for Rett syndrome or had a full gene sequencing, that they mm -hmm. should check for that because it is often um, overlooked and misdiagnosed. And um, it's, it's really important, I think, for families to find the right community to be in. Most definitely. If our viewers want to learn more about Rett Syndrome and your foundation, what's the best way of finding that out? Thank you. The best way would be to visit our website, which is rettsyndrome.org, and that's R-E-T-T-S-Y-N-D-R-O-M-E dot O-R-G. Excellent. Well, thank you. Looking forward to hearing some very good news about the clinical trials, and hopefully uh, it will be very effective on all who take it, especially your daughter. Thank you, and we hope that for all children. Thanks. Thank take care. Bye-bye. Right. What, what would you say? What, what would you say has been the highlight of your career? The highlight of my career is definitely growing and who I am as a person and my confidence and um, just being me and inspiring others, definitely. And uh, what, what has been your favorite match against, uh, that Giants have played against? Ooh, I think tonight is going to be one of my favorites. I mean, it's always such a fun game to watch against the Dodgers because we're kind of rivals and everything, so I'm excited to see what the outcome is. What's your favorite match that we played? That would definitely be the one against the Padres back okay. in uh, back in 2019. Nice. <laughs> Great. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much. And have you met the, the have you met the players in person? I've met a few of the players. Um, Hunter Pence, Buster Posey some of our previous players, so it's been really, really good. Have you met any of the players? I met, well, I've met Will Clark. Yeah, he's always fun. He's, he's a fun one to be around. He's a big personality. Hi, I'm Stacey Kennedy here with Ascend, our nonprofit organization for our adult autism. Uh, group and today tonight we are here at the Giants game and we are with um, Campos family wine vineyards and your names you I'm Michelle Campos Robert Campos Rick Michelle and Victor and Victor so hi um, what do you have for for us tonight that you would like to share within the autism community and can you Talk to us about your wine. I would love to. So this is Gigi's blend. Gigi is actually our granddaughter. And uh, when she was very young, she was diagnosed with autism. How young? About eight years old. Okay. Eight years old. But when she was 11, uh -huh. she decided she would use her artwork. She said, Nana, if you make a wine, I will make the label. And we will give back from every bottle proceeds to Temple Grandin's Autism Foundation. Oh, wow. So we have Temple Grandin come to our winery every other year, yeah. and we do a big fundraiser, and we raise uh, thousands of dollars every year. So many parents are looking for the, the, the same answer. Their child has autism, and they're just they're reaching out to all these type of events, and, and Temple Grandin, they're looking for that answer, and, and we try to help provide it, and that's why proceeds from each one of our bottles goes towards that good cause. That is wonderful, wow. It's, a, it's an award-winning, three-time gold medal winning in the San Francisco Chronicle wine, so it's pretty good. So you're from Contra Costa County, so that would be up near East Bay. East Bay, Red, East Red Bay. Red okay, Red yeah. Bay. Yeah, and you have a lot of visitors, I imagine, so like have a lot of, lot of visitors, and um, I, I'm someone that goes up that way once a year or so, and I'm gonna have to, ch now I will. Come and do a little wine tasting. We do concerts, we do weddings, we have events. And of course, fundraisers. And, and best of all, we've got a baseball field out in the back called the Field of Dreams, and that's how we're kind of hooking up with Will Clark. Oh my gosh, that is excellent. And that's a great movie too. So you, you have baseball and lots of other activities. Any artists that come to sing and perform anything or present any art of any kind within the autism community? Um, you know what? We haven't done art with the autism community, but that's a great idea. But wine is an art, would wine you say? Wine is an art. Wine is definitely an art. And this was uh, 
one of our first give backs, and this was Gigi's idea. She has another piece of art we might put on another wine label. Great, great. Well, thank you so much. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, so we're here at Oracle Park with Trey Clark and his sister Ella. Hi, and everyone. yeah, and they're going to be telling us a little bit about their involvement with autism and autism awareness night by the San Francisco Giants. So Trey, um, is this the first time you've been here? Uh, uh, Pacific Bell Park, no, no, it, I've been in here a lot. Uh, since uh, I think 2004, uh, when we, we, we were uh, first, uh, when we were uh, we were there for a vacation with uh, Uncle uh, Josh Toro, and um, and then uh, and then when uh, Dad came, like the special assistant for the general manager Brian Sabin, and uh, Brian Sabian, excuse me, and um, he uh, he hired Dad, and uh, and since uh, 2009 we we started going to uh, Giants games ever since. Do you consider yourself a big baseball fan? Yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ever, ever since I was uh, born, I was a big baseball fan. That's great. Mm -hmm. And are you having fun at the event tonight? Yes, ma'am, I am. It's, it's really fun. And are you looking forward to the game? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. And uh, who do you think is going to win? <laughs> I think the Giants. All right. Good. But, Good. I, but to be totally honest with you, I, I heard that the uh, Dodgers won the division, but... They're 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 one hell of a team and um, and um, I and uh, I think I think uh, a victory against the Dodgers would be would be wonderful it, okay. wonderful for well, tonight. Go, go Giants! Yeah. Okay, Ella, tell us a little bit about your connection to the. Tell us a little bit about your connection to the event. Yes. So um, I have always had a passion. Yes. I have always had a passion for autism awareness and research, and uh, just being here tonight, it's so, so, so special. Um, I am going to be in Miss Louisiana in February, so we're, we're Louisiana natives, so that's going to be really fun. Uh, I get to share my platform of autism awareness, which is so special to my heart and my family's heart, so it's going to be great. I'm excited to be here. Tell us a little bit about this ribbon. Yes, yeah, so I just won Miss Crescent City, uh, which is a preliminary pageant. Thank you. <laughs> which is a preliminary pageant uh, to Miss Louisiana USA. So February, we'll see. We're crossing our fingers. <laughs> well, this is very exciting. Is this the past to Miss America? Miss USA. Miss USA. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe one day. So we'll see. But very exciting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. And Thank good you. luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, folks, uh, that's this week's broadcast of Ascend TV Life on the Autism Spectrum. Wish you were here. If you're in the Bay Area, you are always welcome. Uh, we're looking forward to doing some more on site in house activities very soon. So until then, I'm your co host, Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. And I'm Jennifer Brooks. And we're Ascend TV, live on the autism spectrum. Until next time, have a great one.